All right, so today I was talking to a buddy of mine. He was asking me about how to set the idle mixture screws on his carburetor. And I realized I do a lot of talking about this and I've never actually made a video over it yet. And when we go ahead and get the head swap done in this truck, I'll do a full carburetor um, how-to setup video and ignition timing. But for now, I figured I'd go ahead and make this. So uh, anyway, let's get after it. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, one being using your tachometer and the other being using a vacuum gauge. And today we're going to go ahead and use a vacuum gauge because uh, you really get your tune much more exact with this. And um, one more step further you can even go is if you have a AFR gauge in your car, um, it makes it that much simpler because it gives you an exact air-fuel ratio readout. But um, this truck doesn't have that and we have a vacuum gauge so we're going to go ahead and go the vacuum gauge route today. So the first thing you want to do with your vacuum gauge is you want to find a source of full manifold vacuum. And that source of manifold vacuum needs to be split between both banks of the engine. Some of these um, dual plane intakes are fully divided and um, if you're tapping into a port on your intake manifold that's only pulling from one side of the engine, you're going to get some improper readings for uh, setting your idle mixture screws. But in this case, we've, we're hooked into two ports here. This is the PCV port on the front of the carburetor. We have a bigger vacuum gauge hooked in. We're just going to do a little comparison about um, vacuum, vacuum gauge sizing. The bigger the vacuum gauge that you have, the more um, fine adjustment you can get. So we'll compare that between the two here. But um, where most of you are going to hook in is uh, your full manifold vacuum port for your vacuum advance. Now how you can find this, there's going to be two ports on your carburetor that are uh, the smaller size. And when your engine's running and you pull the cap off, the engine that's sucking air, that's going to be a full manifold vacuum. So we have this hooked up um, as such. So anyway, we're going to get to setting our carburetor and get rolling and fire this thing up. Okay, so what I've done here is taken both my mix screws and I've turned these all the way in until they're seated. And you don't want to crank on them just until they're nice and lightly seated. And um, Holly carburetors, they'll usually be opposing and Edelbrock's, they'll be right in the front there. But you want to take them all the way in so they're seated. And then you want to back these back out about two to two and an eighth to two and a quarter turns. And that's a good starting point. So anyway, we've done that and we're ready to uh, fire up our truck. Um, one more thing I want to mention is I got my scoop off here, but I do have my air filter on and you want to leave these restrictions on your airflow on your engine. Um, if I were to take my air filter off when I would have the final adjustment done, it would be incorrect. So anyway, let's uh, fire this thing up and see what she does. So we got our engine running here, and uh, we can see quite a variation over there on our larger vacuum gauge. But uh, taking a look here, we can see our vacuum reading is pretty low and it's kind of hunting around. So what we're going to do is we're going to lean this engine out or richen it up. You're going to want to turn the adjustment screws evenly until you get the highest vacuum reading possible first. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So now we've reached the point where we've come to maximum vacuum on our engine and our needle is starting to pull back down the more I lean it out and starting to uh, hunt around. So we're going to go back to that highest point of vacuum that we had and then we're going to richen it um, an eighth to a quarter of a turn from there. And then we should be safe and good to go. And then we'll check everything afterward. Alright, so now we've reached our maximum idle vacuum. Our readings um, good and steady now. We reached our highest manifold vacuum and then uh, usually this is by leaning it out from two and a half turns. You're usually going to be leaner than that or else you have another problem in your carburetor. So that's something to watch out for. But uh, from there you're going to be leaning it out and you want to do this evenly across the carburetor. 
And uh, you want to do this until your manifold vacuum reaches its highest point. And then from there, you want to then equally richen both mix screws about a quarter to an eighth of a turn. I like to go a quarter because I like to be uh, on the safe side. So uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. She's idle and good, good steady vacuum, good throttle response off idle. So we're good to go. Put our scoop back on and that's it. So anyway, quick little thing on how to uh, adjust your mixture screws with the vacuum gauge.